Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. I have several questions today related to dissociative identity disorder. I'll refer to this as DID. So I have some questions about Trisha Paytas, her video about like switching on camera, right, where she has the alters and she switches between them. And then two other videos she did after that. I also had some questions about another channel, and I can't pronounce the name of the channel. It's a combination of the word dissociative and DID. It's run by a young lady who refers to herself as Nin, right? So I'm just going to call that Nin's channel. So we have Trisha Paytas, Nin, and then just the general trend of individuals switching alters on camera. I'm going to talk about that as well. So just a reminder here that these individuals I'm talking about are real people. So I'm not diagnosing anybody here, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. So not long ago, I made a video about Trisha Paytas' Meet the Alters video. And I didn't think there would be any more follow-ups to that video, right? I didn't think she would make any more videos like that. I thought she was done with that topic for a while, or I would have waited and reviewed all of her DID videos at one time. Not long after I made my video, she released the switching video, so I was working on that. I was working on the outline for that. And then as I was doing that work, I saw she released two more videos. So I stopped and then watched those and then came back to this. So that delayed production a bit because of her releasing those videos. But also I had to kind of build my cognitive reasoning skills back up after watching her first video, right? So it's difficult for me to watch her videos. I'm accustomed to educational content and Trisha Paytas does not qualify. It reminds me of a mini-series I watched a while back on Chernobyl, I think it was on HBO, and how the people that were going in to clean up that radioactive disaster, that meltdown, they had to limit their exposure to the radiation, right? Just like an hour at a time, whatever. That's how I feel about Trisha Paytas videos. I go in there, I watch them, and I come out of the experience just not feeling as sharp, so I have to read some scientific literature, take a break, and build that back up. So that happens each time I watch one. So I really had to do a lot of recovery from that experience. Now, that's not saying she's bad or anything like that. It's just not my type of content, right? That's what I experience whenever I look at content that's not really entertaining for me or educational for me. So I also had, again, many requests to review Nin's channel. So I figured I'd throw that in into the same video. So my first video on Trisha Paytas covered... DID in detail, like the science behind it, the argument kind of for and against it, really. So I won't repeat all that. I'll put a link to that video in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the three videos from Trisha Paytas that I'm referring to here, and then take a look at Nin's channel, and then give my summary on this idea of people switching alters on camera. So the first Trisha Paytas video I'm looking at here is the switching video. We see that Trisha apologizes. She talks about how these alters or this disorder is a secret ability that no one can see. She makes a reference to the X-Men movies, which I thought was interesting. Then she pauses, and I was thinking to myself, you know, here we go, right? Here we're going to start with the alters. And that's what happened. We saw the angry alter, I guess. I guess that was supposed to be kind of a hostile alter. And then what I guess was a little kid alter, not really sure. Didn't really make a lot of sense. And then back to what I assume is the primary personality, Trisha. She talks about how she's been diagnosed in the past with schizophrenia, bipolar, and borderline personality disorder. So just an interesting note here. She could be telling the truth. I'm not saying she's not telling the truth. But you really can't have schizophrenia and bipolar at the same time because that would be called schizoaffective. Now, I have seen clinicians who diagnose them separately, but that's not the correct way to do it. There's another disorder that is essentially a combination of those two disorders. Now, it's also possible that she was diagnosed with one, and then it went away, and then she was diagnosed with another. That's not really likely, but I just wanted to point out that technical aspect of how those disorders actually work. She mentions that two of her alters have all but died, and I was wondering, did they die of embarrassment for making that video? Seems like a realistic explanation, but I think I was just cranky from having to watch so much of that content, so that's probably why that thought came to mind. We see this 
security footage component toward the end of this video. I think that's what that was supposed to look like. Like it was this camera set up looking at what I guess is her kitchen. And she's going around like eating Doritos and some other food. I don't know what it was, some sort of fruit based snack or something. And then I guess she switches and then she's sick from having eaten the food in her own kitchen. I don't know if the altars bought that or I don't know, maybe somebody else lives with her. I don't know what happened there, but that was the setup there. So we have the angry person, the little kid, and then the person who has bad decision-making skills when it comes to food selection. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that was supposed to be, but that's what we have in terms of these three altars featured in this particular video. Then we see the next video is the Stop the Bullying video that was directed at Nin, the young lady I mentioned, who has the other channel on DID. Trisha was mad at the attention she was getting from that other content creator. I think maybe she was a little kid for the first part of that. I'm not really sure. Then back to the main personality. She said she was triggered because she was accused of faking the disorder. And she accused Nin of trying to get views by using Trisha Paytas' name. Now, on YouTube, that's pretty common. You chase the different trends as a content creator sometimes. I don't really see how that's a valid criticism. I mean, a lot of people do that, and that's really kind of the name of the game. But either way, that video had a lot of rambling. And to use an example from an earlier video, signal-to-noise ratio, you know, how much is signal, how much is noise, that second video was pretty much all noise, at least as far as my perspective. At one point in that video, she said, nobody knows what's in her head. Seems like a fair statement, given the circumstances. Then we move to the not okay video, that's what I'll call it. And this is really kind of more the same, just kind of free associating. She mentions borderline personality disorder again. She declared that one thing she knows about is mental health. That really stood out. She said she'll never talk about this again. I was hoping that she would kind of fall through with that. That would be a commitment that she would stick to. And really, she lost me for the whole rest of the video. I did watch it. I watched it but I kind of zoned out. So now moving to Nin's channel. Now Nin is kind of held up by some in the DID community as accurately representing the disorder and to some extent dissociation and trauma in general. We see she has meet my alters type videos, switching videos, and a number on trauma as well as some other subjects. I watched several of her videos and parts of quite a few looking for like concrete statements definitive statements based on research. And from what I saw, the sample I took, there were a few videos that had references in the description for the video. And she also talked about articles that she read and even read the results from some of those articles. The results weren't synthesized, right? It wasn't like she read them all and kind of wove them together like we would typically see with something like that. But still, it was much better than we see with most channels on DID. So I was pretty happy to see that an article was involved at any level. There was a moment in one of her videos, and maybe she says it in other videos, I don't know, but she says, if you believe in science, then DID is real. Now, many scientists, of course, would strongly disagree with that assertion, but it seems like Nin's position is fairly clear, which I get. The nature of her channel is to talk about DID, so it would be surprising if she brought up some of the evidence that runs against the diagnostic classification being valid. Now, with science, it's not really a about believing in science and then declaring something is real or not. Science is about a methodology and we use the method. And really in terms of mental health research or any type of scientific research, scientists are trying to disprove their own theories as well as they're trying to prove them, right? So it's not a matter of starting out with a belief and then trying to find everything that supports that belief. It's a matter of starting out the theory and then trying to disprove it. So again, I can understand her position. Her channel is about DID, and this is fairly common. People will read an article and they'll see some support for their position, and then they won't look at the other research that really strongly indicates the opposite assertion. So it seems like a channel kind of based on people feeling a connection with the content creator, which is fine, which is actually fairly common, but that's not exactly the same thing as educational. Even still, as I mentioned, I was thrilled to see scientific research being used in any of the videos. That was great. I just have no way of knowing in terms of, like people ask, is she faking it? Does she really have the disorder? 
I have no way of knowing that. And that's not just with her. That goes for any of the channels where we see the switching behavior and really any of the DID channels in general. She does seem more articulate than Trisha Paytas, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the information is accurate. The bottom line here is it's impossible really to prove or disprove the ID, which is why many, if not most, mental health clinicians are skeptical about the disorder. At the doctoral level, like individuals with PhDs, for example, we see a high degree of skepticism, particularly about the prevalence. So even those who say, okay, some people probably have the disorder, they're still skeptical about this idea that it's highly prevalent. If somebody were to say that one-tenth of one percent of the population had DID, okay, that might make some sense. But to say that two, three, four, five percent of the population have it, I've never seen any evidence that supports that, right? So the skepticism isn't always about the existence of the disorder. It can be, and often is, about the prevalence. So this brings me to a few concerns about these, I'll call them switching channels, in general. So I'm not being specific here to Trisha Paytas or to Nin. I'm talking in general terms. Are these symptoms fake in these channels? Well, everyone needs to decide that for themselves. But for the channels that are faking symptoms, they are really very offensive to people with DID or dissociative symptoms, and they're destructive in other ways. I'll look at six ways here in this video. The first, watching these switching channels is as far as some people go to learn, which is actually pretty scary, right? Some people believe everything they see in a video is real. And with the people who are faking, they're not saying, look, this isn't real. They're not putting a disclaimer up. They're acting like it is real. So if somebody watches one of those videos or several of them, and they believe that's how DID really looks, and they believe it's highly prevalent, they could be getting bad information. Second point, counselors in training watch videos on switching, right? That's not uncommon because it's part of what we see that's out there. They watch videos on a lot of different mental health topics. When they see these switching videos, in my experience as somebody who supervised literally hundreds of counselors in training, we see they dismiss the concept of DID. They look at these videos as ridiculous and they dismiss them out of hand. And that's it, right? That's what they learned. They had that bad experience watching the video and they formed their opinion. It is difficult to undo initial learning. First impressions actually are important. I help counselors in training pretty regularly to unlearn bad habits, including the different things we see on these DID videos, and it's quite time consuming. So it's a waste of resources. Point number three, I think these videos encourage others to make the same types of videos, right? So if somebody's faking it, and somebody watches that, they think I can do it too, I can get views that way, I can become popular on YouTube. So it encourages bad behavior. Point number four, it minimizes legitimate dissociative experiences, right? They're not fun, they're actually quite painful. So people who have dissociation might ask themselves, why am I not having the same experience as this content creator? So they may think something is wrong with them, not in the dissociation way, but some other thing is wrong with them, like they're not having the right experience, like their experiences are invalid. To think that these symptoms are being faked to gain popularity or whatever people are trying to gain is actually quite disheartening. Point number five, this trend overestimates the risk. People think they have DID when they don't. All these content creators have it, so I must have it too. It's a cool thing to have, right? It's trendy. So people who have dissociative symptoms may immediately jump to thinking they have DID because again, they think everyone must have it. Now, again, looking at the scientific literature, the risk of this disorder in any one particular individual is very low. Point number six, it's not appropriate or glamorous to fake any other disorder, so why is it acceptable with DID? Now, maybe there are people who fake other disorders, but you don't typically see videos like depression caught on camera, like here I am looking really sad or having insomnia or something like that. You don't really see too much on panic disorder caught on camera. There's some, but it's not really glorified the same way DID is. We don't see too much on personality disorders, like here I am being narcissistic, I'm being arrogant and condescending to somebody, you know, caught on camera. We don't really see that. So why is DID selected for these caught on camera type videos? I think because it's thought of as dramatic, exciting, and there's this idea that people are lucky to have it. It's so interesting as a topic. 
Well, all mental disorders are interesting. I think that DID really gets mischaracterized as exciting and dramatic, and people certainly aren't lucky to have it. At least not most people are diagnosed with it. I don't think they would generally say they're fortunate to have the disorder, right? So those are six concerns I have surrounding, again, individuals who are faking symptoms. My final thoughts after watching all these videos on DID and some other ones I watched in preparing for this video, I would actually call for compassion, right? With these switching videos, some of these individuals may actually have the disorder. Again, I don't know. Some, I think, are faking it. And again, not referring to anybody in particular, but talking in general terms. Now, these videos can hurt people, as I indicated, but many people who do this are struggling themselves. They may have mental disorders or the symptoms of mental disorders. They could, for example, have personality disorders. We see like attention-seeking behavior, poor boundaries, lack of awareness, narcissism, deception, mood lability, which is when somebody has difficulty regulating their mood. Personality disorders are actually quite serious and require treatment. It's easy to forget that the people in these videos are human beings, right? You see these people faking it and causing all this damage, and it's easy to get mad at them and say, well, they're bringing on destruction and they deserve whatever bad happens to them. They are still people. Mental health counseling services exist to help, not to judge. I doubt there is really much satisfaction with the behavior they are doing, right? So yes, there may be some financial reward, but in the long run, will they have any personal growth? If they're faking the symptoms, they are living a lie. And that in itself is usually stressful. So if somebody is running a channel where they are faking DID symptoms, they are switching on camera and all that, I would recommend seeking counseling and sticking with it for as long as the mental health professional recommends. That would be the smart move. Hurting people, misleading people, misrepresenting a disorder, that's not helping anybody, including the perpetrator. Now, I know whenever I talk about topics like DID, there will be a variety of opinions. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.